Hello everyone, I'm Inverse, and this is Build Order Breakdown Volksvolk Sniper MG Part 3 from North Angleville. Today we got a game against Krausen, who was STG Krausen, a very, very good back in the 2.301 days PE and Americans player. He'll be playing Americans from the south. I, of course, will be playing as Wehrmacht from the north. Let's get this game started a little bit. Of course, if you haven't seen the first two parts in the Volksvolk Sniper MG series, I highly, highly recommend you at least check out part one. And if you're having trouble from South Angleville, check out part two. The next map will be Longra that I will be covering. But just getting on with this map, just going to go over my early capping order with this build just quickly. It's pretty simple standard stuff. I've actually begun now quick building just a little bit. I'll get into this more on the Sturzdorf replay so I don't want to talk about it too too much but if you quick build which means build with two pioneers for about two seconds with this barracks you'll notice my manpower right now is 280 that's what I want to be at when I finish the Wehrmacht quarter so I can build my Volks right at 280 see I have about 25 extra manpower right here ideally I would finish this right when I have 280 in order to get that uh, Volk squad out as quickly as possible. It's a really minor point, but it helps a little bit, especially on this map, in getting your squad into cover on this left-hand side, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but my capping order, sending the first Pioneer to the left-hand side, second, or the first Pioneer I have actually builds and then goes to the right-hand side, the built Pioneer, goes to the left-hand side, capping this point. He's going to come down here, cap this point, and if he's able to, go over here and cap this point. Uh, my first Volk squad gonna go right to the middle gonna cap this point and then move over here to support There's two things an American player can do early game on this map He can either well. I mean if he's going something standard meaning he's not going for uh, Something like a four engineer barracks start which kind of changes things up a little bit and we'll get to some of those games Hopefully I do believe I have a few replays on other maps of that strategy that we will check out later on in the guide but the two things that the Amer American player can do here is either... Because he's, he's going to send a, an engineer to the right and an engineer to the left in most cases. The first rifle squad is either going to go to the right and push off this pioneer. Or he's going to go to the left and try to harass this fuel cap. We notice no uh, rifle squad on the left hand side just yet. So it's a fairly good indication that the rifle squad is on the right hand side. Capping this point is also a fairly good indication if he only had an engineer he would still be capping this resource point right now. So this is a fairly good indication of a rifle squad and yep there's the rifle squad right there. This pioneer if you can stall out stall out early game but it's more important to keep your pioneers alive like right here I'm getting some good damage in putting them in a house definitely a good thing to do you see on this left hand side I did manage to push off this Engineer squad you can be aggressive with this Volk squad early game if you notice your opponent's first rifle is on this right hand side You do see I did manage to get this pioneer out This is something I haven't really emphasized too too much in this guide so far But I really want to make it very very clear that your pioneers are some of your most important units It's very very thin timings with this strategy if you lose a pioneer you either have to rebuild it And that means you have to delay your med bunker because if you rebuild a Pioneer and you get a Med Bunker, your T2 is going to be delayed by that 120 manpower. And that can, in some cases, against really, really top level players who have really, really tight timings with their fast M8 builds, it can be really, really tough to defend against that fast M8 early on. If you spent that extra manpower on a unit that really doesn't do anything against the M8, especially when you didn't necessarily need to because it was some it was a mistake on your part to be completely honest. Now we see this wire right here. This is something I don't always do, but it is something useful to do with the sandbags fr from the north. Meanwhile, we do see the mines going down. As I've said before, mines absolutely essential to this strategy. This sandbag little placement here makes these mines very very easy to place because they kind of give your opponent a few chokes to go down we see he is trying to cut me off I do have my sniper on the field however always want to move uncloaked early on with your sniper and turn around you see he's gonna turn around in a second there we go and then right when he turns around actually it was a little slow on that but you want to turn around and shoot because he's not gonna kill your sniper unless he gets really really lucky like that 
and in 90% of the cases, he's just not going to kill your sniper. So he is going to try to cut me off. He is going to cut me off, but that's really not a big deal. I have this munitions point. This is probably the most important point on this side because these two points are pretty much a given that you're going to get on the left-hand side if you're focusing on the left-hand side, which you almost certainly should be. But this one point up here, a little bit more difficult to hold. He might actually decap it, which is not too big of a deal. He does have a lot of rifles on the field, and this is one of those vulnerable, kind of scary moments I mentioned earlier because he outnumbers me in terms of fighting units. I have my sniper, but he should have four rifles on the field right now. I'm not sure where the fourth is. It actually might be over there. I missed that. But this was a little bit sloppy by him, keeping them all together. He's going to split them up and probably split them up in time, but he's actually going to just retreat, which is probably a good idea. This is the one problem with, as an American player, keeping all of your squads together like that. However, he did manage to decap the uh, munitions on the left-hand side, so a minor victory for him. I do have my bunker up. However, you will notice... Because of the mines I've been placing, I do not have the munitions for the medic upgrade. That's perfectly fine. It's a number one priority to keep yourself safe early game, and mines are the number one way to ensure that. If you can't get the med bunker part of the bunker, the medic upgrade, in like right away, right when you build it, that's not a problem at all. Mines should be a priority. You see, I do have these two mines right here. I am going to get one more right here. And then I'm going to get my medic upgrade. At least I think that's how I remember it. Uh, furthermore, I haven't seen any upgrades. I have my tier 2. I haven't seen rifles, bars. I have no reason to suspect a weapon support center. So I have to be safe right now. I'm going to get tier 2 up right away. And kind of play off of what my opponent shows me after this. If he goes bars, I am going to get another uh, MG. And... Oh, Okay, that was a mistake. Uh, if he goes bars, I am going to get another MG. You see me trying to just move around with my sniper. This is a little risky because if he has a mine like right here or right over here and I move over that, the sniper is as good as dead. So this is something that, like as you see, I'm not moving too close. Do not move close to strap points with the sniper. Do not move into chokes or common mine areas. Over here and down here are both very common mine areas that you will lose snipers in a lot if you're uncareful. Uh, that was more just to force that one engineer to retreat or take a whole ton of damage. He did, of course, retreat. And that's going to give me a bit of free reign on the right-hand side because my opponent's going to have to divert uh, some manpower in the form of rifles or engineers to defending these points if I try to recap them. And you see, I did get the med bunker up before this uh, mine. However, right after the med bunker, every last munitions is being spent on mines. If you get... Um, a lot of mines even if you don't have a shrek you get a pack you're perfectly fine against the ma uh but you do see i'm getting a pack right now i'm getting a pack first because i have no idea what he's doing he hasn't shown me anything and he's being very very passive usually at this point in the game if your opponent has gone for some sort of upgrade or infantry tech he's going to want to be aggressive because he's going to want to take advantage of that tech advantage that he has and right here I see bars, however, so if we flip back to the Krieg Barracks, I actually canceled the pack. And the reason I canceled the pack is bars, he's not going to have any vehicles whatsoever. He's actually gearing up for a fairly big flank right now. So instead of the uh, pack, I'm getting a Grenout, and I'm also getting a second MG. Never, ever, ever be afraid to cancel buildings cancel units cancel upgrades that you don't need because your opponent showed you something that makes that upgrade completely useless if i had gotten that pack right now i wouldn't have this grin and this upcoming flank would be a lot more difficult to hold because i would have one less unit that is uh actually useful against uh defending flanks now i have two i have two more at this mg and i have this uh grin and both of those are going to help me immensely in defending this flank. It was actually kind of weird that he only sent one rifle in right now. Probably a little bit rusty, Crescent is. But at this point, he's not going to be able to do any damage with a flank. He's going to have to tech up to either a motor pool or a Sherman or something like that to really break this position unless he goes weapon support center and really, really out micros me. So at this point, I'm feeling very, very, very comfortable. It's about 10 minutes in, 920 
and I have the majority of the left hand side, I have all the left hand side points I need, I'm going to finally start pushing into the right hand side because I've successfully countered his tech. I have my two MGs, I have a Gren, I'm getting a second Gren, I'm going to get a pack after the second Gren, and that's kind of the standard uh, tier two build, regardless of what your opponent is doing, and regardless of what your opponent has shown you, is to get two Grens and a pack at some point doesn't really matter the order in which you get those three units in general it will depend on what your opponent shows you in this case I got the two grands before the pack because he showed me bars and because I have a fairly hefty mun munitions income Angleville is a map that gives you a lot of munitions especially if you hold this left hand side and this plus 10 which I haven't held this plus 10 for most of the game, but I have held this left hand side for a good portion of the game. And that gives you a fairly decent uh, munitions income and makes it easy for you to get Shreks if you're feeling uh, worried. As you see, I'm getting a Shrek right now. It's probably a bit early to get this Shrek, but better safe than sorry, really. I am getting the pack. <coughs> Whoa, excuse me. I am getting the pack. And this is more just to be safe. At this point, he's invested a lot into his bar tech. And he is going to be doing one of two things right now. He's either going to be reinforcing and gearing up for another attack. Which will hit me in probably under a minute if he does decide to go down that path. Or he will be sitting back defending his right hand side and teching to either motor pool tank depot or weapon support center most likely tank depot or weapon support center however after tier two is already on the field like this motor pool kind of loses its effectiveness for an american player it's good for the at guns but it's not good offensively and at this point the american player is in kind of a tough spot because he has to be offensive if he's not offensive at all he is going to be in a lot of trouble because i have the resource advantage seeing as I have half the map. As a Wehrmacht player, that is an advantage for you. Half the map is absolutely essential. You see, I am going for tier 3 and the reason I'm going for tier 3 instead of tier 2 vet is because I've shown him tier 2 and he's gone bars. Now, I could go tier 2 vet and get vet 2 on my grens and be able to hold a uh, stand up against his bars. However, if he goes something like weapon support center straight off the bat seeing my tier 2, and really tries to hard counter my infantry, I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble. However, if I go tier three and he tries to hard counter my tier two, I'm just gonna win straight up because he's gonna have a sniper and I'm gonna have pumas. And sniper against pumas, not really good for the snipers. Uh, meanwhile, if he tries to counter my, my tier three with his uh, with say a tank depot or something like that uh, I'm in perfectly fine shape because I have a lot of the map I'm going to be able to see if he has an observation post over here so I'm gonna know if he's gonna have faster Shermans or if he's going to be a little bit more delayed I'm actually probably just gonna cap the uh, VPs because if we look at the VPs up here they are getting a little low on my side and I am terror I believe I have picked terror. yes I am terror so I'm playing for the late game and I want those VPs in my advantage. See, still uh, laying mines, mines here, mines here, all game, always want mines everywhere you can, everywhere you want, all that fun stuff. Uh, I was talking about, oh yeah, if he goes tank depot, I already have the counter in tier two. And the moment he shows me tank depot, I can just throw down a comp craft center and start pumping out vet because that is the response you want to make to a player who goes tank depot on a map like Sturzdorf, where fast shermans is so popular because of all that fuel especially against this strategy because it's very hard to be aggressive in terms of map control with this strategy just because of the lack of capping units and the necessity to harass we see strafing run as well um i'm really really going to want to get uh veterancy because I'm going to want to overpower his infantry. Tier 2 is easily going to be able to counter the Shermans if I play correctly. Getting a second pack if I need it, if he's going really really heavy tanks, getting vet 3 which gives a 20% health bonus which is very very useful against Shermans. Vet 2 not so much. If you're going to get vet against an American player who, who goes tanks you need to go all the way up to vet 3 
because Vet2 will do absolutely nothing against the Shermans. You see my first Puma is now on the field. I will go up to two Pumas if I see Motor Pool or Weapon Support Center tech. If not, I will sit back and I will get a Comcraft Center. You see this Pioneer waiting over here for the Comcraft Center. I'm split up a little bit right now and the reason for this is now that my Puma's on the field, I can easily control the right hand side with it. He's going to have to divert some sort of anti-tank to the right hand side and I can just move out of the way. He actually hit a mine right there but didn't damage an engine which is kind of unfortunate for my opponent. But I am pushing out on the right hand side. One of the best ways to beat this strategy that I'm doing as an American player is to choke out VPs on the right hand side. If I let my opponent control the right hand side for too long and leave it uncontested for too long, it's going to be very very difficult for me to come back late game, even with my King Tiger. Just because um, the harassing potential of the American player, especially on the VPs, is so incredibly great that I will just have a very hard time capping back all the VPs if he gets it down to say 100 when my King Tiger comes out because I won't have very many reinforcements. You see this pack actually being a little bit useless right now. However, it is, it's kind of a safety measure. I mean, it's not, you don't need to get it super, super early, but I definitely recommend until you really, really, really know your timings and you really, 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 really know what you're doing to always get that pack as part of your tier two instead of getting it later at all we do see now tank depot tech on the field he's gonna go and try to kill this uh puma probably uh i'm going to want to cloak my sniper and move it out of the way preferably into a corner because the m10 can run the sniper over if he so desires actually i'm not doing that right now and i'm kind of surprised there we go uh but i am sending my at back and what i want to be doing right now is keeping my other units mobile and keep them capping which i'm not doing and something i definitely could have done better this game now this M10 a little bit ill-fated, use buildings to your advantage. As you can see right here, he hasn't been able to kill my Puma because if he tries to run around, I am just going to keep running around and doing a circle and, and there goes the M10. So right now I am miles and miles and miles ahead. You see I have stopped Puma production at one. I am going to get veterancy and then resume Puma production for a little bit. And the reason for that is he went M10 first and he did absolutely nothing with it. That's a fairly hefty fuel investment and it's not as much as a Sherman, but it will definitely delay a Sherman if a Sherman on, is on the field. And the Sherman is what you are really worried about with this strategy. The M10s are really not that dangerous. Shermans have a lot of health. You see, I'm getting an upgun because he did go M10s. Against Sherman's upguns, not very useful, but against M10s, M10s get penetrated super easily, even from the upgun uh, just on the Puma. And uh, it's just, it's a very, very good upgrade to have if your opponent is going for M10. And if your opponent is not going for M10, you're going to want a second pack on the field. Of course, my opponent not really going for uh, Sherman's. And also is going for Strafing Run, which is another reason why you really, really want to pump out this vet as much as possible. We see Vet 2 already out. Went straight for Vet 2 after the uh, M10 died. Against any sort of airborne play, you're almost always going to want veterancy over uh, units. And you're never, ever going to want Tier 4. And the reason for that is AT guns and paratroopers, very, very good against Tier 4. And AT guns and paratroopers both come with the airborne doctrine. Uh, meanwhile, what's not good against. Uh, Paratroopers tier 3 of course as well as uh, Veterancy because strafing run gets kind of negated by veterancy and the fact that your opponent doesn't have any sort of heavy uh, artillery to counteract the med bunker and stuff like that makes a Heavier tier 2 strategy with vet against any sort of airborne play very 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 effective You see I am emphasizing VPs on the right hand side and the reason for that is I need to keep this VP tick down I do not want him to gain too heavy a VP advantage because it will put me in a very uncomfortable position going later into this game. Second Puma on the field right now. Now if I hadn't killed that first M10 and if he had an M10 and a Sherman right now, I almost certainly would have gotten a second uh, pack instead of that second Puma. 
but because he lost that first tank, he's almost certainly not going to have another tank aside from the Sherman. The Sherman is almost 100% his only tank on the field right now. Just because they're so expensive, American tanks are in terms of manpower and in terms of fuel, that it's just it's very, very unlikely from a resource perspective he would have the resources for multiple tanks, multiple vehicles at this point in the game. I'm trying to cut him, up, cut him off on the right hand side, just trying to slow stuff down. He is not really letting me, but if we do look back at my base, I will be getting Vet 3 up as soon as possible, and I am just pushing up on this left hand side. Uh, he keeps strafing me, but he's from 2.301 where strafe actually wasn't terrible, so that's unfortunate. I'm reversing into the, uh, <laughs> into the Sherman because I'm an idiot, but I do manage to kill it. Upguns, definitely worth the price. They are still extremely effective against infantry. They kill infantry just like that you saw right there. Instead of merely uh, damaging them like the Puma does, you really need multiple Pumas in order to actually get any sort of use out of them. We do see Tier 3 coming up for me right now. And this is, once again, just kind of a standard late game Americans against Wehrmacht. The transition period's kind of over. We saw after the bars getting uh, Tier 3, in general, my rule of thumb is against no rifle upgrades, ex uh, assume uh, tanks, assume tier 4, and prepare for that with vet and with another pack. This is of course past early game, so not like super super early, but I'm talking, you have tier 2 up, you have your 3 tier 2 units, and you don't see your opponent doing anything, and he has the fuel. That is a very, very strong indication of some sort of tank depot tech. And we'll see a lot more examples of that in the Sturzdorf games. Because that's a very, very, very common thing to do in Sturzdorf. Just because of the fuel. It's less common on this map, but with an observation post over here. You see, I haven't even had sight of this point for the entirety of the game. Because I really don't need to. As we see, still pushing into the right-hand side. Going to want to cap back this VP as quickly as possible. Um, aside from that, I mean, if... If your opponent goes for a veterans, I mean a, a rifle tech route, as we saw this game, going for the bars, and then later on going for the uh, tank depot tech, tier three definitely an option you want to be going down. Furthermore, if your opponent goes for motor pool and does not really do anything with it, tier three is the follow up that you want to be focusing on, and the, and the reason for that is. You've gone tier 2, you've showed tier 2, your opponent's M8 has not done anything. The likelihood of your opponent building tanks from that point is very, very low. He's invested a lot of fuel and a lot of time into the uh, tank depot tech. I mean, not the tank depot tech, the motor pool tech. And he didn't really get anything out of that. What he's going to be wanting to do, at least logically, of course he might not, and you can react accordingly, but the strongest thing for him to do would be to back tech to bars, get a sniper or two and try to counter your tier two and a tier three follow up to your tier two play after you've negated the m8 is extremely extremely strong especially because your opponent's motor pool doesn't really do a good job of countering your tier three he it does a decent job i mean it's not great and it's not terrible but what your opponent really wants to counter your tier three is tanks and AT guns, they can do a decent job against Pumas, but if I go, say, Nebels, I can kind of negate the AT guns. At this point, I feel really, 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 really confident. See this little bit of cute wire right here, because why not? Uh, keep my munitions down, which is very, very important. Wehrmacht is a munitions intensive faction. You saw me a little bit earlier salvaging this point and then I actually stopped salvaging because I went to cap and now they're capping together. Yay friends. Come on. Come on guys. Stop making me look bad. No, they're not going to move. Okay. Oh well. Uh, now they are. Yay. I figured it out. Uh, but at this point the game is kind of drawing down. We're going to see one final from the American player, but I've just been killing too much manpower, and he has not been able to deal enough damage to me at this point. So... I don't know, guys. I've kind of I've kind of exhausted everything I could possibly say about this map. I did get a second pack because... Um, I mean, I don't really need more infantry. We look at the tactical map. I mean, I have 
Gren there, Gren there, Gren there. I've got my Pios laying mines. I've got a pack on the right hand side. I also now have a pack on the left hand side. I've got Pumas on both sides. I'm just kind of anticipating and preparing to react to whatever he throws at me at either spot. Um, and I'm going to push up and finally see that he never OP'd this point. I probably should have done that a little bit earlier because if he did OP this earlier, I would have probably prepared instantly for Tank Depot instead of going for Tier 3 and then Tank Depot because it would have been a far heavier Tank Depot play. Would have been probably a Sherman instead of that M10 straight off the bat. Excuse me. And it would have been almost certainly a second Sherman. And Shermans are not incredibly difficult to deal with with one of them but once your opponent gets two or more it's kind of like exponential they get really 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 hard to kill at that point but we do see the final push coming in on the left hand side uh, this is something interesting that you can do is if you pick up a bar with a grand squad that should be the squad that you upgrade the panzer shreks with because the the icon for the weapon is always the first uh, weapon that the squad picks up. In this case, it picked up a bar, so it's of course going to show a bar. But if I upgrade to Shreks, my opponent is going to think, hey, that's a bar squad, I can run at it with a Sherman. And no, it has Shreks. Now I lost the bar because he's down to one man. So now it shows the Shreks, but at the time, you know, it's a little... Of course, if your opponent is... Uh, observant and smart he's not going to be fooled by that but most players are going to at least once run a Sherman up to a uh, squad with a bar icon that actually has a Shrek and you're gonna get a few free shots off and he's not gonna do it again but he's gonna be a lot more cautious and it's just a small thing that hey to get a little extra advantage might as well take it but this game is is come on come on come on come on no it's not over yet there we go there's the gg so uh with that game concluded that concludes the angleville portion of the build order breakdown volks volk sniper mg series of course if you have any more specific questions on the map on the build in general do not hesitate to post in the comments in the game replace thread in the game replay shoutcast thread all that fun stuff send me pms anything check me out on twitch tv twitch.tv slash inverse tv i stream almost daily especially now that i am in exam break so all i have to do is study and i will be streaming daily i will be recording videos daily this is the first in the remaining series that will hopefully be recorded and posted daily, so look for the Langra episode tomorrow or later today if I'm feeling very productive. And aside from that, check me out on Twitter, twitter.com slash inverse TV. Follow me on or subscribe to me on YouTube if you enjoy what I do. It really, really helps me out a lot. Thank you for watching, everyone. Hopefully this helps you out a little bit, and I will see you next time. Peace.